folks nate from 8020 back at you after a little bit of a hiatus so what's been going on with me in the last couple months i've been shedding like crazy did the dbk clinic did the nam show for year two in a row big shout outs eric watson tj fisher uh drums for success the dbk organization also met some met some new friends roderick pleasance Sean Wright, great to see you again, Hang, etc. cetera. Uh, Shariq Tucker, an inspiration. Paige, what was his name? Everybody above my level. Andy Prado, big shout outs for us. Okay, so to brass tacks, today's lesson is what's Nate been working on in the ensuing month slash what can you do to open up your playing? Open up your plan, open up your plan, man. Um, so I don't have the hats here, obviously, but this is... If you get into a rut where it's all just this stuff, right hand over left, left hand doing the rim shots, and I've had a bunch of people ask me, because a lot of people are checking out Spud, a lot of people are checking out Dana Hawkins, so inquiring minds want to know, like, what are these guys doing to, to seemingly play open? And I'm going to make a contention here, which is that the type of open that you see Spud doing, or you see somebody like Dana Hawkins doing, is different than somebody who's truly left-handed and plays open, like say Carter Beauford. These exercises are gonna kind of step you into that. But very first and foremost, I'm doing the Gabe Helguera vocal modulation. Hold your attention, man, that guy is so good on camera. One of these days, folks, one of these days. So you'll notice I have zero symbols here. Mine will holler at a brother. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's because I discovered a way to practice by necessity. So we come into the practice room, somebody else had been using the kit, I had like 25 minutes before another band was coming in, and I didn't want to fuck with setting up the cymbals. So I started just playing the drums with no cymbals, actually got the idea from Chris Paproda, shout outs, and something happened. I noticed that after a couple of weeks of doing it, my playing was more solid, and we like solid. So here's what we do. We're literally just gonna set a metronome, And we're gonna play some ideas. So I'm going to do no rim shots. I'm gonna alternate between and amongst eighths, triplets, and sixteenths. I'm gonna start simple and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little bit more complicated. So let's just do that first. I'm choosing a tempo at which okay, so we're gonna do sixteenths, sex tuplets, and thirty seconds at a tempo that's not gonna kill me. So you're trying to do that type of stuff, just put the metronome wherever you want it. Real talk, actually, when I'm practicing that stuff, I'll have the metronome going like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's because I've been doing some deep work on my time, listened back to some of the takes from DBK, wasn't super happy with my the way I was locking in with the tracks. For you guys, you know, check my video archive if you're in the course, put that metronome on quarters if you're just starting out on like 16th offbeats if you're a little more advanced um, but use the metronome in a way that it's going to challenge you but not too much so then next thing you could do is just snare drum no rim shots and rim shots and that's because we want to play with this textural difference but we also want these so by the way what do rudiments give you rudiments give you those those that, little, that connective tissue, that masakote in between your accented strokes, that's when it's really clean, it's all the same volume, that's rudiments. That's Ted Reed syncopation, it's also Alan Dawson, rudimental ritual. So, same thing. <clears throat>
Great, and then you can just apply that to the whole kit. So that's chapter one. So now I'm gonna to try to talk to you as I install the symbols here, and we'll see how well Nate can make a segue. So how are you guys doing? What's going on in your lives? Nope. Oh, there goes the overhead. So yeah, I couldn't sustain that, which means that I'm paying for extra video editing, which means we might as well add some, some interesting psychedelic special effects. You'll notice a couple things are different. Number one, we no longer have an overhead. That's through the magic of aging camera batteries. Number two, we've got the hats, but only the hats. So, what are we doing now? We're playing with just the hats and the snare, and we're making every rim shot with the right hand, but we're still playing right hand lead. So let me play a few idioms for you that'll work for that. Mm -hmm. Etc. So now I'm just going to improvise a little bit and I'm also going to try to half time what I'm doing. And you'll notice that as again, as I said, everything I'm doing is right hand lead. So we're not doing any of this like which is valuable. I've been working on that stuff just to develop the left hand, but this is a different animal than that. Three, four. Etc. So this is how you get some of that more Dana Hawkins style vocabulary. And the more you improvise with this, more, the more you're starting to incorporate the toms. Etc. So we're going to take another pause. Nate's going to install the stack. And through the magic of camera editing, we've now got the stack here. So now we're going to play like a jazz beat same tempo, same style, and we're just gonna incorporate the hats as a voice and also as a phrasing thing. And if you're interested in that, check out any of my jazz lessons, particularly the Max Roach one. This is essentially Max Ra Roach in straight eighths. Yeah, I have another one about how to play in straight eighths with, which helps about this too, but for the rest of you guys, I'm just gonna play simply a couple idioms you can copy, uh, which somebody will transcribe for you, and then I'll improvise a little more, so two, Three, four. Good, okay, that's enough for you to transcribe and work out. So now let me improvise a little. Three, four. Etc. By the way, that was on big beat three there. That wasn't intended to be a downbeat. Little defensive, sorry. Been emotional this week. 
So finally, the last ingredient in this omelet is we're going to keep the same right hand lead, right hand rim shot thing, but now we're gonna split it half and half. So let me try to do some copyable idioms for you there. Three, four. Good, got it, okay, <laughs> improvising. Etc. So that's how you get there. And again, this is half stuff you can copy right now and work on, and half sort of Nate showing you inside his brain, like what I'm working on the last couple months. So I feel like my stuff has gotten more solid because of that. Didn't hurt to have a master class from Sean, Forrest, Andy, Roderick, Paige, who am I forgetting, Sharik at all. Oh, Andy, yeah, at DBK. So folks, here's the part of the lesson where I show you how to give back. If you've been enjoying the lessons, if you've been getting value, if you've been implementing them in your real life and seeing your playing get better, you're ready to take it to the next level. Maybe you're starting to think about, okay, what would it be like if I studied with Nate? Well, it just so happens that I have a year's worth of study with me and all of the best lessons that worked for hundreds of students distilled down into a single interactive video course, and that's the 80-20 coaching course. More information about that on my site, but if you guys want a gateway drug to that, if you want to see just a little bit of what it's like, take a step up to some of my more sort of structured things, like these lessons I ramble a little bit, I recommend you check out my three free videos three videos that will make you better in three weeks than you've gotten in the last six months. To check them out, just click on the screen here, go to that page, you can download them for free. Dudes, it's been real. I'll try not to be as much of a stranger going forward. Nate from 8020, one love.